Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to another StarCraft 2 broadcast. My name is Anaris, and today we're here watching a Terran vs. Zerg on the map Shakuras Plateau. Oh sweet Shakuras Plateau, how I missed thee for the past few weeks. But it is back once again, and we do have Pit spawning as the Terran in the top left. His opponent is going to be New Type, the Zerg in the bottom right. So this is a replay that I downloaded from an Asian replay website. Both of these players, you know, I haven't really heard of them before. But from the interpreter's uh, kind of halfway translation of the text, it seemed like it was a pretty good game. So I figured, hey, why not give it a shot? So here we are today on what is quite possibly my favorite map. Now that, uh, well, you know, it's funny actually, Zalnaka Caverns used to be my favorite, but it's so overplayed now. I don't know, just uh, every other game I see, I download, like, uh, is, is on that map. So kind of burned down on it a little bit. So I'm looking forward to some good times here. I'm trying to think if there's anything interesting going on in the world of Anaris StarCraft. Oh, actually, there's something really cool coming up. So, as most of you know, I do work over at uh, SK Gaming doing their StarCraft 2 videos and whatnot. And we're starting this new thing where we're going to be sitting down with pro gamers and interviewing slash having a dual commentary with them while we watch one of their games. So we're going to kind of sync up a replay, talk on Skype, and discuss what they're thinking, you know, find out a little bit mo uh, more about their personal life, their goals, and also their strategies that they're employing in that particular game that we're watching. So that's going to be coming up in the coming weeks. The first player that we're going to be doing it with is uh, Jempo, who recently joined at Team SK. And after that, we have Bishu, who, if you all are not familiar with him, he is the person who won the December Champions Trophy Tournament. Pretty sick Protoss player, so looking forward to that. Good stuff coming down the line here. And also, I did hear you guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast that one-hour Terran versus Terran replay. It, like, I, I watched some of it. It was pretty interesting, and it didn't devolve into siege tanks sitting on one side of the map just staring each other down. So I was really happy to see that. So I think it's going to be worth our time to watch that. So I'll be casting that in the next couple days here. And now that the players have started building up just a little bit, let's look at what's gone on so far. We have the expansion going down first, first for the Zerg player at the natural. Also getting his gas and spawning pool about the same time. Up here for the Terran player, you see he's open with a pretty standard opener so far. He's got uh, his depot at 10, his barracks at 12. He's got his sec depot down already, and he's got a tech lab up for his barracks. Now, he is actually sitting at about 400 minerals right now, so we know that he has dumped all that into a command center, which he is building above his expansion. Now, I do like that, because if any if any units such as uh, Zergling were hanging out right here, maybe an Overlord had made its way across the map, you see that one right there, then that command center being built would kind of tip off the Zerg, you know, hey, maybe I need to get another base, yada yada yada. So kind of like I kind of like building that command center early on. Plus, you know, the event one of the advantages of that is also you can use some SCVs, from that command center, send them right up to your mineral line, and of course you can build an orbital command in the safety of your own base and have two mules right off the bat. Win-win. So Terran is throwing down his second geyser now, also getting a factory. Now looking down here at the Zerg player, I do want to point out he has actually opted for some roaches. Now a lot of times in Zerg versus Terran, you'll see the Zerg kind of opt for a Zergling, Baneling, Metalisk play. Um, they'll try to get those Zerglings out right off the bat just because they're so fast, they're good at map control, and it's a good response unit when you're dealing with any sort of small harassment. But the Roaches, on the other hand, are very, very strong. And I actually see a little bit of Reaper scouting right here. This is a good idea by Pit. Going to be able to get up here and jump up and down the cliffs as there is a nice safe spot to go down right here that Zerg cannot pursue. Of course, Roaches are also pretty darn good at catching those Reapers when the Roaches are on the creep. Do have to get that speed upgrade later on to, uh, to really be able to catch them with uh, any relative ease not on the creep. Now, Zerg actually has one Roach here patrolling back and forth. A good idea. And, you know, it's funny. The Terran player, I don't think he's actually... Yeah, he's scouted with the Reaper, but that's it. So he actually knows those Reapers are coming. Or those Roaches, rather. You see, he does have two factories right now. One of them with a tech lab. The Roaches are actually just going to be going right up. Will they pass the bunker? It's not quite done yet. Might be able to catch those Marines off guard. Oh, man, the Marines do make it into the bunker where they will be able to fire from safety. You see a couple of those Roaches are taking a lot of damage there. One of them might actually go down. First Roach does go down, but the Marauder goes down as well as they do climb up the ramp. Maybe. Maybe. No, nope, looks like they're going to go back down. Okay, there we go. I was about to say, 
be uh, not a great move if you decided to go back there and re-engage the bunker. So the Terran is actually uh, brought his SCVs off, thinking he would have to block away the Roaches. But the Roaches are just hanging out at the ramp here, just trying to deny any sort of trans, uh, you know, transferring of SCVs over to the mineral line, pick off any Marines that may decide to pop out for a second or two there. And meanwhile, Zerg is also getting the speed upgrade for the Zerglings. And there goes an addition to the factory denied as a tech lab goes down as well. This is the one resourcing Siege, really going to put, uh, put a stop to those Siege tanks on the way. One did manage to pop out, though. Of course, siege tanks have a siege tanks rather have a very high damage output. You can see right here, 25 versus armored, 1.04 second attack speed. As the SCVs are coming off the line, trying to push these roaches away, want to keep them away from the marauder and the siege tank. Establish a nice little defensive line there, and now they're just mining because there's only a couple roaches left. Not that huge of a deal. Let's look at the impact of that attack. We see the Zerg player did lose 8 units, 800, 800 resources right there. Terran lost 23, almost 1,300. So pretty good attack for the Zerg player. Didn't knock the Terran out, but certainly did a lot of damage there. Also delayed the siege tech a good bit. So good stuff for the Zerg as Terran does continue to throw down his mules, trying to recoup his losses. We look at the income tab right now. It's about 1,100 to about 1,000. But look at that, man. 20 to 40. This expansion's looking pretty good, man. I'll tell you what, he's got about uh, 13 drones there. You can also see majority of them are up here. So got those roach patrolling as well. So as he does uh, claim uh, both additional geysers, you can notice that new type is throwing down a spire and a spine crawler. So looking to switch up, maybe get some mutas, do a little bit of harassment here. I think I think mutas will actually be really good on this particular setup because there's a lot of open spaces on Shakuras Plateau that you can fly over. There's a lot of little cliffs. There's a lot of places blocked off by rocks. So it really works out in the Zerg's favor in that regard. But at the same time, you got to remember that there's also a lot of open area on this map. This is not one of the most favorite maps, but it's a pretty popular map for that very reason. A lot of open spaces. You see, look at that giant open space right there with a capital A for awesome. So plenty of interesting features here as we do move past the 10-minute mark in the game. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the Terran player is going to do. I'm sure the Roaches threw him off just a little bit here. He's probably thinking, huh, well, do I stick with that same build that I was going with? Is he really going to be going for, uh, you know, the traditional uh, Zerg versus Terran Zergling Mutalisk? Or is he going to be doing something a little bit different here? Right now, new type is actually coming up here with his Overseer. Might decide to throw down a Contaminate on something before he leaves. I do not know. We'll keep an eye on that. I do want to point out there's also a Overlord over here dropping Creep on the expansion at the top right. And the Overlord, or the Overseer, does actually just head on out. Looking at the worker count now, we can see it's 50, 51 to 34. So Zerg maintaining that lead. Let's close just a tiny bit for a second, but crept back up and now he's 21 ahead look at that production man you can see he has got plenty coming down the line here even getting the level one attack upgrade for air units as the first wave of mutas house now popped throwing down another hatchery here as well that'll definitely help out with getting a lot more units which you know for a little while he probably will have a lot of mineral income coming up here very shortly because he's still going to have his main he's going to have his natural and he's going to have this which just popped a moment ago here come the Mutas coming in. There is a turret going down. One already done up here. Should be able to knock that out. The SCV has been taken out as he does go towards the mineral line. Taking out a couple SCVs, but it has to retreat. Just doesn't quite have the Mutas that he wants to engage that, uh, that missile turret right there. Sure, he could take it out, but at what cost? He would lose a lot of Mutas, and he would also leave himself very vulnerable to the Marine Ball, which is now here. So good call on pulling out there at the last second. Also throwing down a couple more extractors here. Got to make sure he can get that gas to keep up with those mutas. Let's look at the Terran player for just a moment. You see he is focusing on those siege tanks, anticipating a lot of ground units. He is still working with the two factories. He has uh, he has gotten two additional uh, reactors for his barracks. Also an army. So he's probably thinking of getting some Thors here. Thors are great in dealing with mutas as long as the mutas are not spread out in that coveted magic box. That's something he's going to have to watch out for. It's going to require a little bit of micro on the Zerg's part, so shouldn't be too big of a deal. Not that difficult. As we see, the Terran player has now found out this expansion is here. He may decide to put a little bit of pressure as he sees Zerglings are taking out the rocks while the Mutas are trying to do some harassment on the mineral line for the natural expansion. Does not go very well, though, as the Terran defenses are already in place right at the top of the ramp. 
Mutas do have a couple, a couple additional reinforcements here, as Weapons 1 is just about complete. Now note that the Baneling Speed Upgrade is now on the way, so we can expect to see some Banelings here. Maybe a bust, I do not know. Terran does have a lot of Siege Tanks here. He does have one Hellion, which will help out a little bit with the Zerglings, but it's going to depend on the rest of the units, where they're positioned, and whatnot. Actually saw a very sexy Terran versus Zerg the other day, where the Terran just had the perfect split, and no matter what the Zerg could do with with Zerglings, Banelings, and Metas, he just could not burst through the entire defense. It was really impressive play. Maybe we'll see some more of that here. For now, we are seeing the Zerglings attacking once again, the rocks are flipped up. I don't know why it's doing that. Somebody suggested that I do the repair thing on my computer, which I probably should, but eh, it's kind of entertaining to see that. One Hellion coming out here. Muta's able to catch that just in time. What's going to happen here? I'm not too sure if the Zerglings are actually going to be able to uh, be in too much danger. Yeah, sure enough, there's just too many Mutas there for those Zerglings to really uh, take any serious damage. Now, Pitt has decided to throw down two barracks. This is a really good idea here. It's going to help out, kind of funnel the uh, funnel any sort of baneling bust into this one central area where the bunkers are, or the bunker is, rather. English is hard. Now, notice that Terran is actually transferring a lot of his forces up here to this expansion. This is going to be kind of... Oh, nice hit on the SCV right there. Oh, Zerg is looking for some blood today as he is moving dangerously close to the T's line. Marines did move out in front, and look at this, Banelings are coming in, allowing the Thor to take the majority of the shots, and now the Marines are free to do a lot of damage to the Mutas, but there are so many Mutas here. Look at that, 15 Mutas, and the Terran player just does not really have the Marines to compensate for the loss of that Thor. You see more Marines and Thor, and another Thor is here, but this expansion is going to take some damage. It might burn, I don't know. Looks like the Marines are going to be able to drive it off there at the last second. Oh, Sacrificial Muta right there, ladies and gentlemen. Not sure what was up with that, just keeping the rest of the forces off of his backs, I guess. Nice Zerg force is assembling right here in the middle of the map. We do have good number of Banelings, although a lot of them are still morphing in as the Terran player, or Zerg player does move in to attack the natural expansion. He did send his Mutas in first. He Now, one thing he did see was that there's no Marines shooting from this bunker. So he's probably thinking, you know what, it's probably going to be uh, safe to attack at least a little bit. And let's see here, what's the Terran player doing? He's not actually adjusting his forces at all. He's keeping the majority of them right here with the Planetary Fortress. Zerg taking advantage of that is moving in here through the natural expansion. Bunker has gone down. The Zerglings are doing a ton of damage to these barracks. Here come the Banelings. Where are they going to go? Are they going to go right into the mineral line or go up to the top and try to intercept the Marines? A couple of them go into the mineral line here. Look at fantastic explosion. More Banelings going to be coming around, going right around the Thor's good micro, and now the rest of them are going to waste in the Thor. So, knocked out a bunch of Marines there, and Zerg doing his job, taking out the natural expansion. Terran really doesn't have a lot he could do at this point. You know, he's lost all of his bases except for this one right here, and, you know, I'm pretty sure that uh, Zerg at this point will be able to get enough Mutas to take that out should he need to. But there are three Thors here, decent number of Marines, and a few siege tanks. Mutas taking advantage of the mobility here, advantage that they do have, and coming back up the cliff and taking out a turret. Where, oh man, look at the Banelings coming in there, knocking out all of the workers right there, except for a few, and the Mutas are here to finish it up. So that expansion is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Marines are running for their lives away from this Zerg onslaught. Look at the Baneling coming in here. Oh man, is it going to explode? Yes, it does. Takes out most of those Marines, and now Terran... Pitt is going in at this point, you know, there's not a lot he can do. Zerg has three bases. Terran's got, well, he's got squat. 17, 70 to 18 harvesters. And here come the Mitas going right into the Thors. And a flank attack from behind. we got more Zerglings coming in. And even the Queen's here to finish it off. There's the GG from Pitt. Good game, guys. All right, so New Type does take a victory here today on Shakuras Plateau. I do hope you enjoyed this match. Try to get some more epic games here coming in the coming hours or so, as I've got plenty of time for casting here in the next day. Or one, two, three. Next day or three. So good stuff there. All right, I'll see you guys later.